This week on SLU News 22, a SLU program to benefit the needy spreads across the nation. SLU Democrats and Republicans team up for some friendly competition. We'll look at local, national, and world news. Plus, a look at campus sports and weather. This is SLU News 22. Thanks for joining us. On October 22nd, student volunteers in 20 cities across the nation prepared and delivered the one millionth meal to neighbors in need through the Campus Kitchens Project, a national student-powered hunger relief organization that started on the St. Louis University campus. The Campus Kitchens Project partners with high schools, colleges, and universities to share on-campus kitchen space, recover unused food from cafeterias, work with local farms for produce, and engage students as volunteers who plan menus, prepare, and deliver meals to the community. Since 2001, the Campus Kitchens Project has provided healthy meals to their neighbors in need by harnessing the spirit of student volunteerism with local communities. Now in its eighth year, Campus Kitchens operates on 20 college and high school campuses, providing meals to individuals and families in their communities. On Sunday, two powerful suicide car bombs near high-profile government offices exploded in Baghdad on Sunday in Iraq's deadliest attack in more than two years. The blast killed at least 147 people and injured 500 more. The attack raised fresh worry about the capabilities of Iraq's security services ahead of the national election scheduled for January. Palm Beach billionaire Jeffrey Pecower, described as the biggest beneficiary of Bernard Madoff's fraud, died on Sunday. He was found lying in the bottom of his pool at his home, according to police. Emergency services were called to the Oceanside Mansion after Pecower was pulled from the pool by his wife and housekeepers. He was later pronounced dead. The Palm Beach Post reported the fire rescue officials as saying the police are investigating the death as a drowning. Pecower was 67. More, no, more than a thousand firefighters raced into the Santa Cruz Mountains on Sunday as a wind-whipped blaze burning in rugged canyons threatened dozens of homes in the same community that was devastated by flames last year. About 85 residents were ordered to evacuate as the blaze showed that this year's fire season isn't yet over despite recent showers that were so heavy they caused mudslides in the same area now burning. By Sunday night, the fight against the fire had gone well. Fire officials said the blaze was 20% contained after it consumed 600 acres and destroyed a trailer and two outbuildings. About 160 structures remained threatened. UN inspectors entered a once secret uranium enrichment facility with bunker like construction and heavy military protection that raised Western suspicions about the extent of Iran's nuclear program. The visit Sunday by the four member International Atomic Energy Agency team was the first independent look inside the planned nuclear fuel lab, a former ammunition dump burrowed into the treeless hills of south of Tehran. The inspectors are expected to study plant blueprints, interview workers, and take soil samples before writing up the three-day mission. No results from the inspection are expected until the team leaves the country, but some Iranian officials hailed the visit as an example that their nuclear program was open to international scrutiny. On Saturday, November 7th at 4 p.m., the College Democrats and the College Republicans, with the help of the Student Activities Board, will be hosting a dodgeball tournament in the Simon Rec Center. If you'd like to submit a team of six to play in the tournament, visit slewconnection.com to fill out the entry form. Each person must donate a minimum of $5 to be eligible. All proceeds will go to the United Service Organizations. Chief Meteorologist David Keller is here with us. David, November's getting closer. It's starting to get colder outside. Yeah, temperatures have been very cool recently. We had very cool temperatures this afternoon. Here in St. Louis, we only reached into the middle 50s. While just off to our south, they did make it into the 70s. However, we are expecting temperatures to begin to fall overnight with a low temperature around 46 degrees, mostly cloudy, light rain, and drizzle likely overnight. But we do have some good news in the forecast. But unfortunately, I do have more rain to tell you about when we get to the seven-day forecast coming up later. All right, we'll get to that coming up later in the newscast. Right after the break, we'll take a look at Billiken basketball, some new technology from Facebook and Microsoft, and a win in the fight against breast cancer. Stay with us. This is SLU News 22.
mass suicide adhere to the Mayan calendar, which predicts the end of time to occur on the 21st of December of this year. This year. This year. What are the odds? <laughs> is building these ships. So when do we let the people know? Our mission is to assure the continuity of our species. Wasn't it also decided the people have the right to fight for their lives? <laughs> Welcome back to SLU News 22. President Barack Obama has declared the swine flu outbreak a national emergency, allowing hospitals and local governments to speedily set up the alternate sites for treatment and triage of any surge of patients. The declaration Saturday did not signify any unanticipated worsening in the United States of the H1N1 outbreak. It seems likely, however, to increase concerns, disruptions, and at times, panicky reactions to a disease now affecting most parts of the world. Thousands of Americans have lined up for vac vaccinations, even as federal officials acknowledge that their ambitious vaccination program has gotten off to a slow start. Only 16 million doses of the vaccine are available now, and about 30 million were expected by the end of the month. Some states have requested 10 times the amount allotted. Flu activity, the, virtually all of it in the swine flu, is now widespread in 46 states, a level equaling the peak of typical winter flu season. Millions of people in the United States have had swine flu either in the first wave in the spring or in the current wave. The American Cancer Society announced that more than $60,000 was raised at its inaugural Making Strides Against Breast Cancer event. It was held on Sunday at Kentucky Horse Park. More than 550 community members participated in the five-mile walk to honor and celebrate breast cancer survivors, educate people about the disease, and raise funds and awareness to create a world with less breast cancer and more birthdays. The money raised through Making Strides helps the American Cancer Society to save lives by helping people stay w well by taking steps to prevent cancer or find it early. It also helps people to get well by being there for them 
during and after the cancer diagnosis. It also helps by finding cures through investments in groundbreaking research and by fighting back by encouraging lawmakers to pass laws to defeat cancer by rallying communities worldwide to join the fight. The St. Louis University Department of Athletics announced game times for the upcoming 2009-2010 men's basketball season. Visit the official SLU Athletics website, www.slubillikins.com, for the most up-to-date and complete information on games and game times. Please note that the game times may be changed to accommodate television broadcasts. The local TV broadcast schedule is being finalized and could affect tip-off times. Tickets for the first exhibition game Friday, October 30th, against University of Arkansas, Fort Smith, are $10 for adults and $5 for kids ages 18 and under. The contest is part of a doubleheader at Chaffetz Arena with the number 24 ranked Billiken volleyball team, which faces Fordham at 6 p.m. in the Athletic 10 conference match. The men's basketball game will start at approximately 8 p.m. The second exhibition game against St. Ambrose, Saturday, November 7th, will begin at 2 p.m. We will take a look at technology and sports when we come back. The rain will continue through your Tuesday. However, we do have some sun in the forecast, but more heavy rain is a possibility for later this week. Weather coming up right after the break. the bus stop have to be in the front of my driveway so I can watch my little Walter get on the bus in one piece. I don't know what she'd do without you. I don't know what I'd do without her. We're already living paycheck to paycheck. We're gonna have to move. I'm sorry about the job, Arthur. You gotta be kidding me. I assume you received the box. I have an offer to make. If you push the button, two things will happen. First, someone somewhere in the world whom you don't know will die. Second, you will receive a payment of one million dollars. You have 24 hours. Did you get a chance to run that license plate number? Hello, Norma. My hokey isn't playing detective. <laughs> I have quite a few employees. Somebody pushing your buttons? What if you say no? There are always consequences. He's testing you. We have to save your son or your wife is gonna die. How's she gonna die? You're going to kill her. Welcome back to SLU News 22. Chief Meteorologist David Keller is back with us. David, it's been rainy recently. What can we expect in the days ahead? Well, we can expect a couple more days of rain and cooler temperatures. The rain today did help to keep temperatures well below normal. We had a high of 56 degrees here at SLU. Now, our low this morning was only 51 degrees, so we did not warm very much due to the rain we had across the area. Now, the high out at Lambert was 56 as well. That is well below normal, and we're going to continue to see below normal temperatures, but we do see a warming trend coming up. Now, this afternoon, we did have a stationary boundary draped across the region that brought us the clouds and light rain and drizzle we saw this afternoon. It also helped to keep temperatures very cool. You can see on the north side of this boundary, temperatures were in the 50s. However, just to the south, they were very warm up into the 70s. We're not seeing 
any of that warm air heading in our direction for the next several days. In fact, the stationary boundary is going to continue to sit across the region overnight. And that means more light rain and some drizzle. It will begin to fade away towards morning. However, another storm system will work up from the south, bring us another wave of rain for the day on Tuesday. So here is your forecast for Tuesday. When you wake up, some light rain or drizzle around the area. Temperature 46 degrees. So rather chilly and damp start to your day. By noon time, temperatures do warm up to 55 degrees. Rain still around the area. In fact, rain could be increasing as we head through the afternoon. Rain likely by 4 p.m. with a high of only 59 degrees, once again below normal. And temperatures falling back to 53 degrees with rain exiting overnight by the time we get into the evening. So here is your seven day forecast. On Tuesday, uh, once again, a high of 59 degrees with showers across the area. On Wednesday, we do warm up to 66 degrees with some sunshine. However, on Thursday, the showers and thunderstorms do return to the area. Heavy showers possibly Thursday night into Friday with a high of 65. On Friday, we do see the sun return for the weekend with highs in the low 60s. So getting back to some normal October, November-ish weather by the time we get to the weekend. Fortunately, it sounds like kind of a gloomy week, but um, maybe this weekend will be a little better. Yeah. Thanks, David. Windows 7, Microsoft's newest operating system, was released to the public last Thursday. The new operating system comes in 32-bit and 64-bit flavors and is considered to be a highly optimized update to Windows Vista. If you have a modern machine, one that was purchased in the last year or two, your machine is probably ready for 7. If your machine runs Windows Vista, you can directly upgrade from Vista to 7. If you run Windows XP, you will have to do a new install. As a college student, you can purchase Windows 7 for $29.99 from win741.com if you have a valid .edu email address. For more links and information on Windows 7, you can find them on our website, slutv.slu.edu. Facebook made some big changes on Friday. When you log into the social networking website, you now have a choice between a live feed and a news feed. The news feed uses a Facebook algorithm to determine posts most interesting to you and adds notifications, other friend activities. Facebook recently added Twitter-like at tags, allowing users to tag friends in status updates and purchased friends feed. With over 300 million users, Facebook boasts more than 45 million status updates every day. Horror flick, Paranormal Activity, has sold a domestic $62.5 million at the box office since its release. The film's popularity made it possible for I Am Global to sell to international distributors for the movie's big debut in theaters worldwide this upcoming Friday. Due to the incredible success, it is possible that Paranormal's filmmakers from Paramount Studios may come out with a sequel to continue the horror fest. Of course they will. When we come back on SLU News 22, we'll take a look at Billiken Sports. Stay with us. Hey, Mr. Hi, Mr. Lewis. Lewis. Morning, boys. Why does the bus stop have to be in the front of my driveway? So I can watch my little Walter get on the bus in one piece. I don't know what she'd do without you. I don't know what I'd do without her. We're already living paycheck to paycheck. We're going to have to move. I'm sorry about the job, Arthur. You gotta be kidding me. Mrs. Lewis, I assume you received the box. I have an offer to make. If you push the button, two things will happen. First, someone somewhere in the world who you don't know will die. Second, you will receive a payment of one million dollars. You have 24 hours. Did you get a chance to run that license plate number? Hello, Norma. My hokey isn't playing detective. I have quite a few employees. consequences. He's testing you. We have to save your son or your wife is gonna die. How's she gonna die? You're going to kill her.
Welcome back to SLU News 22. Let's take a look at Billiken Sports from this past weekend. The men's soccer team had quite a successful weekend at Robert R. Herman Stadium. On Friday night, it was a 4-1 victory for SLU as we beat Fordham. It was a tie game 1-1 one one at halftime, but sophomore Mike Roach scored two goals in the second half to give the Billikens a 4-1 victory. Then on Sunday, it was the Billikens taking on the Spiders of LaSalle. A one to nothing victory as freshman Benny Estes scored his second goal of the season in just three games. The goal came in the 67th minute to give the Billikens a one to nothing victory. This weekend, it's the Ohio two-step for SLU men's soccer. They take on Xavier Friday night and Dayton on Saturday. The women's team closes the regular season with a home game Sunday against Charlotte. In men's basketball, a brand new Meet the Team event is coming up this week. That will be held on Wednesday, October 28th. The event starts at 7 o'clock with a question-answer session with head coach Rick Majerus. Then from 8 to 8.30, an opportunity for autographs and a chat with the men's basketball team. Friday, October 30th is the first exhibition game as they take on Arkansas Fort Smith. Then next Saturday, November 7th, another exhibition against St. Ambrose. The regular season begins on Saturday, November 14th with a 7 o'clock game against Southeastern Missouri State. In the NFL, the St. Louis Rams lost 42-6 this week. The Rams are 0-7 on the year. There are three undefeated teams left in the NFL. The New Orleans Saints are 7-0. The Indianapolis Colts are 6-0, and so are the Denver Broncos. Those three teams are vying for a Super Bowl position on the year. And in Major League Baseball, the New York Yankees defeated the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim in six games in the ALCS. They'll go on to face the Philadelphia Phillies in the World Series. The Phillies beat the Dodgers in five games in the NLCS. World Series begins Wednesday night on Fox. We'll take a final look at weather when we come back on SLU News 22. to the Mayan calendar, which predicts the end of time to occur on the 21st of December of this year. This year. This year. What are the odds? <laughs> is building these ships. So when do we let the people know? Our mission is to assure the continuity of our species. Wasn't it also decided the people have the right to fight for their lives? <laughs>
David is back with a final look at weather. More rain this week, but at least it's not too cold. Yeah, more rain, especially Tuesday and Thursday into Friday. We do see a break on Wednesday with a high of 66 degrees and sun. So that is the pick day of the week. Until we get to the weekend, we do see more sunshine in the forecast, but cooler temps. It is going to be a nice weekend at this point. Awesome. Sounds good. We thank you for joining us. Follow us online at slutv.slu.edu. And on Twitter, this is Slu News 22.